A recent development in EFT is the uh, formulation of a model or sequence of emotional deepening uh, processes. And um, this is a, an attempt to integrate uh, some of the complexity of EFT. But the idea is basically that when we work, when a client comes to see us, they often, they present in a kind of regular sequence uh, that we can follow with the client. And it provides a kind of roadmap or, um, that runs across many, kind, many different kinds of EFT work. And this sequence starts with um, the person presenting, the client presenting with an undifferentiated emotion. This is an emotion which is global and um, uh, not distinct or uh, specific. Uh, so um, the client might say, I feel bad, or I feel frustrated, or uh, I don't know what I feel. So that's an undifferentiated emotion state. It means it's, there's no distinctions. It's just kind of a global feeling of badness. And the therapist helps the client to specify and differentiate, to sort out the different, what kind of bad it is that they feel. And uh, so then it moves to um, a slightly deeper kind of emotion uh, response, and that's typically a secondary reactive emotion. So that's an emotion which is a reaction to another emotion that came before it. And this secondary process is also often the symptoms that clients bring to therapy, you know, whether they're depressed or anxious or um, um, having post-trauma difficulties or, or what have you. So the presenting problems that clients bring, their symptoms are often secondary reactive emotions. And um, these emotions uh, don't help them deal with their situations and they tend to get stuck in them and go around and around in circles. Um, and so um, the therapist gives, the, gives this emotion, this secondary emotion, empathy. They offer it empathy um, because in EFT you cannot leave an emotion before you arrive at it, even if it's a secondary reactive emotion. So it gets empathy, and, but the therapist is listening and helping the client listen to what's underneath or what came before this symptomatic emotion. Um, so a client might come to me with social anxiety or something, which is a secondary uh, reactive emotion. Um, and um, so then the therapist and client begin to listen for what came before that presenting secondary emotion. And that will typically go to, it could be another secondary emotion that something else comes before, or it could be a primary maladaptive emotion. That's an emotion um, which is an old, bad, stuck emotion, which doesn't fit the situation anymore and the person's overreacting to. So these primary maladaptive emotions, people also get stuck in and they go round and round in circles. And um, so, you know, with someone with social anxiety, that would be a sense of shame or defectiveness or shame about their defectiveness. And then the secondary emotion is going to be the fear of the shame uh, that comes after that. So then we're working with this, this primary maladaptive emotion, which is their client's first reaction to a situation, so nothing came before it, um, but it's more about things that have happened to the person in the past. So it's an old, bad, familiar feeling that no longer fits the current situation. And so it's not useful to them. And people do get stuck in these. And so the therapist and client work with this, and again, the client has to arrive at this emotion, fully experience the sense of shame or brokenness, for example, in the case of social anxiety. Um, and then there's a kind of deepening process, uh, and um, one of the re part of this emerging model in EFT is the idea that we help the client to identify in the primary maladaptive emotion their core pain. That's the thing that hurts the most, that the thing at the deepest level of them feels most painful or difficult for them, that they struggle with. And it's often a sense of being broken, a sense of being lost and lonely and abandoned, uh, feeling unlovable. Um, and this, this, prim this core pain, um, then um, what we do in EFT therapy is we then say, what does that pain need? What does that pain need? Um, so remember, we, you know, I've been talking about how uh, part of the value of emotions is they point to needs or wants, and the needs and, needs and wants point to other things. Um, so with the core pain, we say, what is this sense of brokenness or this lost, lonely child part of you or this sense of being so defective? What does this need? And the client then says, the client's sort of at the bottom of their process here, and the client says, well, you know, I just need someone to be there 
to validate me or I need someone to protect me from harm or I need, you know, my socially anxious clients, it's often I just need someone to acknowledge and look at me, to be able to look at me in the face and acknowledge my existence. And so the core pain has, has these unmet needs associated with it. And as the client begins to access the core pain and the unmet needs that they point to, we then say, okay, so what would meet that need? And the thing that would meet that need is a different emotion. So with a sense of, un of being exposed and vulnerable, uh, it would be protective anger. With a sense of being unlovable and alone and abandoned, it would be compassion or love. Um, and so there's another emotion um, that's implicit in the unmet need that uh, comes out of the core pain. And so what happens is the client basically bridges from the primary maladaptive emotion to an adaptive emotion through this, the unmet need associated with the core pain. And we have a kind of set of kind of slogans. So we say, you know, uh, the primary adaptive emotions that we're helping our clients to access in therapy tend to be uh, protective anger. That's the anger that protects. Um, that's uh, uh, s s uh, connecting sadness. So that's the sadness that connects. Um, and that's like with my socially anxious clients, that's the hunger for human contact. And that's sadness of missing out on being with other people and being close to other people. So we have this, uh, as I said, protective anger that's particularly useful for trauma. We have protective sadness, I'm sorry, connecting sadness uh, that's more for, say, something like social anxiety or depression, the, the sadness that connects. Um, and then there's compa self-compassion. Um, we often help the client access a part of them that, that uh, loves and cares and protects and supports the part that's feeling so wounded and injured. So we help the client to access in themselves these, this self-compassion. And that self-compassion is going to transform that, uh, the stuck primary maladaptive emotion. And there are other emotions too. There's love, there's curiosity, there's humor. And these different emotions uh, are all emotions that we help our clients to access their primary adaptive emotions that fit the current situation and they help the clients to transform uh, the primary maladaptive emotion.